<laughs> okay. We will go ahead if we're ready. Okay. Or we have one. Do you have one? Oh, I'll take you to Egypt. Your packet has the agenda. What's this? Yeah, that's in the. We have one. Right. Really rough start. <laughs> okay. We will go ahead and um, call our meeting to order at 1:05 p.m. on Friday, August 25th. Um, this is the Citizens Amphitheater Committee. I am Samantha Wiley. I'm the Beaches, Parks, and Recreation Director, the staff liaison to this committee. Um, as we have some new faces here. So let's, um, before I jump into roll call really quickly, um, we'll also go around the room. But let's do, um, we have all committee members are present, four or five. Um, and we do have a new committee member joining us today. This is Pamela Roth. Do you want to give yourself a little introduction there, Pamela? Oh, okay. Well, thank you for having me. I'm Pamela Roth. I am Steve Noblock's representative. I'm sorry for the damp hair. I just caught out of the shower a few months ago. Um, I've lived here for um, since 20, I've lived here about 12 or 13 years. I practiced as an attorney in Colorado. Um, stay at home mom of a special needs son, and um, I'm happy to be here and help contribute. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Very good. Um, so, everybody knows, I'll just quickly, um, Amanda, why don't we go around the room for the committee members? Introduce yourself, Amanda. Sure. I'm Amanda King Tanil, I'm a St. Clement resident of over 50 years in counting. And um, I just, you know, been active in the community in one aspect or another. And uh, I was uh, originally um, asked by Mayor Jean James at the time to be on the uh, amphitheater subcommittee. And then I was stepping back a little bit from attending city council meetings and then. Uh, and then I said no, I respectfully mm -hmm. declined. And then uh, council member Victor Cabral came in and just swooped in and just, you know, asked me again. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, <laughs> no, I'll do that. So yeah. it's, a, it's really a positive experience, and I'm really I'm glad that I'm here. Uh, <clears throat> Wayne Eggleston, former council member, mayor, planning commissioner, Supreme Galactic commander. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I'm Cowboy Gene James representative, of course he's now no longer here, um, so um, that's what I'm here for. And I manage uh, Park Center 5 in Marine Monument in Sacramento. And I'm an observer basically, I'm with the, I'm, my name is Donia Moore, I'm with the Sacramento Journal, and uh, they've asked me to see what's going on. And I also lived in Sacramento for about 35 years, more or less. And been very active in parks and recreation and very other, various other uh, commissions and committees. So now I'm just taking it easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to sit in the audience. Uh, I'm Sean, I'm a recent grad, uh, just here at USC. Grad of where? USC. Okay. Good school. <laughs> Are you in the arts? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, great. Which part? Uh, arts leadership. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm Kirstie McCleary. I am the uh, draw, after school drama director at St. Clinton High School. And um, uh, Mark Edmire asked me to be on this committee. And I'm happy to be here. Love theater. It's awesome. We, uh, we sort of created our own amphitheater on the top of uh, the upper campus <laughs> on the blacktop, where this sort of little bit evolved from because of this fabulous lady. Anyway, we're just excited to see what what we're all thinking and being a part of this. So. And I'm Susie Lance. I'm a resident in San Clemente. I don't know how many years. I think it's under 20. And my son was involved in the um, high school drama department. He did the sound production, and that's how I got to know Kirsty through the high school. <laughs> and then I also served um, as the CEO for the Chamber of Commerce here at San Clemente. So I'm super happy to be here and passionate about the art. And I invited Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm uh, Michael Lopez. I'm the artistic director at the Cabrillo Playhouse here in San Clemente, uh, going on nine years next month, uh, actually a couple weeks. And um, 
I mean, when I heard about this, I was excited to hear about how about it. Wanted to get more information, but so busy with so many shows. And I love partnering with Kirsty, and she's not only loaned me props, she's loaned me her son for a show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so when, fun. Well, one thing I thought I should add is I think one of the reasons why. Steve has me here is that I, um, <clears throat> I spearheaded two kind of community activist campaigns in St. Clemente, um, making sure there was no car wash gas station on the corner of La Pata and Fitz mm -hmm. I'm the one who started a website called the, La the La Pata Coalition. I don't know if any of you, it's a Facebook group and we, I'm on we it. help to, you're on I fought it <laughs> too. Oh, okay, great. So thank you for joining us. Um, so yes, we successfully fought to not <clears throat> have that there. And also, I fought very hard to make sure that there was outdoor dining on um, on Del Mar. I did. Um, I did um, this community polling and um, campaign very strongly for that. And so, um, and I have a bachelor's of fine arts and art history. So I have a really strong interest in in making sure that things are very attractive and beautiful, and and also in line with our Spanish heritage. So, just look at that. Uh, my name is Leslie Eisner, and I'm the president and artistic director at Camino Real Playhouse in San Juan Capistrano. <laughs> and um, soon to be resident on September 23rd, moving in. Oh, yeah. After Yay. two years of building, they tell me it's going to be ready that day. Oh, I God. don't believe them. <laughs> but anyway, that's the day I'm moving in, whether it's ready or not. So, <laughs> I'm soon to be a resident here, and I can't wait. Okay. Um, we got Amanda. Do we, yes, Amanda. Oh, Amanda. Great. Yes. Hi, I'm Amanda Cobb. I'm the owner and director of Ballet Academy and Movement, and um, my studio has been doing productions and um, needing a theater space. And we're kind of out, wow. outgrown our space. I'm very passionate about the arts. Um, danced professionally for about 20 years with American Ballet Theater, Washington Ballet, Alvin Ailey, Ohio Ballet, Ballet Tucson. <laughs> and um, now I really, really love teaching and sharing my love for the arts with everyone. So I'm excited to get this going. <laughs> okay, so we will um, we'll, we'll take approval of minutes is item number one. Um, are there any questions or changes to the minutes by the committee members or members of the public. I move to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Okay. And do we have a second? second. Thank you. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. And none opposed. Thank you. Um, all right, so we'll jump right into what is old business, the discussion on the feasibility of an amphitheater. Um, so I'll, I'll briefly summarize where we're at, but committee members, please feel free to jump in. Um, we last, at our last meeting, we toured the Krikorian Movie Theater, the former Krikorian Movie Theater site. Um, the committee, I think, generally felt like it was a really great space, um, could be used for all the purposes that the communities brought forward. Um, one of the big concerns is funding, of course. That's, it is a very high price tag for monthly rent at about $3 per square foot, and it, it is a 24,000 square foot facility. So um, that, that's a big ticket. Um, and then, of course, there would need to be some work that would need to be done. There is no stages. There aren't any um, backstage areas. Um, there's no tech system set up. Um, so in, in general, it appeared that um, it has great bones, a lot of potential. Um, but the point of today's meeting, I think we, that we left off looking to talk about funding strategies um, and opportunities for funding. Um, at any point in time, though, the, the agenda kind of highlights a couple of different topics, but this is all about what, what it would take to bring forward an amphitheater or at this point a performing arts facility, which has also been a want. Yes, we uh, Samantha, I, I think we've probably put in the cart before the horse here okay. a bit. Um, I think I, I had lunch with Steve a couple days ago. So um, uh, I think some of the council members are still under the impression that we are moving forward with an amphitheater site. I tried to explain to Steve that um, an amphitheater site right now is a big bite, uh, to say the least. 
and we're trying to uh, go small and, and get enthusiasm and build from there. So I think that, I, I think some of the council members, not only including Steve, but others, think that we're still on, in, that, in that particular stage of, of um, thinking about the mm -hmm. amphitheater. So I think that needs to be really uh, brought forth. I know in the papers uh, it said that, you know, uh, you know, Jaden had already put in the paper that, in fact, uh, that was our, our goal, starting small and going big. Uh, but I think maybe they, maybe people don't read that. I don't know. Uh, but I also think that before we even think about funding or anything of this nature, really a nonprofit group needs to be organized uh, to really to really set this off. I'm not interested in organizing one. I'm doing. I have one which is the Marine Monument. So. I'm not interested in doing that, but others may be interested in doing that. But I think a nonprofit needs to be um, uh, formed and, and work in conjunction with the city. I don't think the city is going to be able to do this all by themselves or want to do this all by themselves. Um, there's a, you know, there's there's a lot of um, projects on the table that the city is uh, thinking about at this point. Uh, for Parks and Rec, and uh, especially Pickup Ball Court, uh, which seems to be growing daily. Um, and um, but I think a nonprofit needs to be formed before even we talk about funding or anything else. I was impressed with the Kikorian. Uh It has six theaters, uh, four of which are amphitheater theaters. The other two are more are smaller theaters. Um, it's been vacant for a long time. How many years? Well over five. Ten, ten, yeah. more than ten years, I even think. Uh, mm -hmm. ten. I don't know. It's been a long time. Yeah. Between five and ten years, it was somewhere before, yeah. Even before COVID, I remember they closed yeah, it before. before. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's been closed for a long time. Uh, there's, there's been an interest from a, a, a church to go in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to comment on that because that church is in. San Clemente High School Triton Center every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it would be a good partner. We already partner. <laughs> and they have to bring all of their stuff in every week and mm -hmm. get it out every week. I, I mean, it just seems like so much work. They have two giant trailers that they bring mm -hmm. in. A lot of churches do that. Yeah, they do. Started too. Yeah, they're growing really big, so mm -hmm. I think they're looking for a permanent space. So. Mm -hmm. What church is it that's there? Zion? Zion. Oh, okay. Zion. That's interesting that um, they're already at the school. They, um, they were at the outlets before. Yeah. Yeah, they, they uh, oh, right. put an offering at this point, as I understand, um, but it's not been accepted by the owner. Um, the owner has to uh, really scrape it at this point for the church. If the church wants to go in, they have to scrape it, which means getting rid of all the theaters. Oh. Uh, and, uh, and, the, and the owner of the recording has to do, a, what, a million dollars worth of, of improvements just to scrape mm -hmm. it. Not including TIs, scraping it. Just making it so it's just the shell. A and shell. Can build a something. shell. So good. which would destroy, obviously, what you know, other theater groups are wanting to do. I'm just wondering if, and I, I don't have experience in this, you folks may, I'm sure you do, but um, San Clemente, it, with, the exception, with the exception of the high school and the Gabrillo theater, is not a theater city. You know, it's not a, it's not known as a as a as a, as a catalyst for a theater organization or city. But if we, but if somehow we can do that and get that type of name, will other will other theater groups be interested in leasing space in the Decorium? If once the word gets out. But obviously, this you know it needs a master lease. I had a brief conversation with Andy Hall, who's the city manager. Obviously, you know he took his his calculator out, went nuts uh, immediately on this, um, and um, so. Um, but I, it needs a master lessee in order to sublease to the other theater groups. And on whether or not the other theater groups are interested in leasing on a monthly basis or not, that you know that's that's beyond my pay grade. That would be something the cities would have to become involved in. 
So I, I don't know if they are interested in doing that or not. But here's an opportunity before us right now to have the Korean theater with six theaters with a lot, with, it's already set up with six theaters, which is perfect. I don't know. Are other groups absolutely interested in leasing on a monthly basis? If you are, then these groups need to step forward, and the city may be interested at that point then to become more involved. Um, I agree with uh, Wayne Engelston. Um, when speaking t with uh, Leslie Eisner from uh, a Camino Play Camp Camino Real Playhouse, and even um, even Casa Romantica, uh, I spoke to Rosie just a little bit, and you know when you look at the Casa Romantica, it says cultural center as well and gardens, and what they have on their webpage is that they do. Uh, have a wide range of cultural programming, including music, art, dance, theater, horticulture, and lecture series. And um, but that is being leased out to the Casa Romantica Foundation. So um, you know that that there is that. Um, and of course, we do have the Carrillo Playhouse, which is, has been running for years, and we're, we're really grateful for that. Um, as far as, I reached out to Halal Hulalani Ola, and they already have their dance studio in, um, in Lake Four, in Laguna Hill, sorry, and they didn't want to, you know, partnership, they're good where, where they're at. However, I did um, get a lot of uh, good information from uh, Val Hongo Whiting, and, um, and you know, I, I think that, you know, depending on, um, the venues of how, how many people come in, I mean, it, it just it really varies whether you have a small you know, venue or a bigger one. I think when I was talking to Leslie, she had mentioned to me that she wants a capacity of 150 seats. However, with uh, Amanda Cobb, I think her goal was 300, uh, 300 seats. So, um, I mean, there's there's a lot of information, and I'm glad that I even spoke with BPNR, spoke to Alexis Honan, to kind of ask what kind of activities we the city is already providing and where at the community um, center and um, a lot of dance classes are being held, uh, line, country line dancing, uh, ballet, um, Zumba kind of lost popularity, um, ballet dancing, I think uh, Tina Edwana or Tina Elkins is taking a summer break right now, but tap dancing is um, also there and uh, ballroom dancing. So there is, you know, there's, they have recitals for ballet for child and through adult, teens and adults. And so I, I think there's a lot to, to process. Um, and, you know, just looking at it, I mean, there's a lot of research that goes in. I even talked to Jonathan Lightfoot from our planning commission um, to find out, or he's in the planning, he's one of the planning commissioners, sorry. And just trying to find out as far as Kikorian, because uh, when we spoke, when we had the meeting last week with Mr. Wynn, he said that there was 300 parking, and from what Jonathan Lightfoot had told me, it was 278. And so, uh, but there is a little bit of history of the parking lot. Um, the tidbit was there was approval for multi story uh, with a parking structure, uh, and it's multiple stories there. But, um, you know, I just feel, after talking to with Samantha Wiley, um, she had mentioned the Lake Forest City Council uh, chambers and maybe down the road, maybe changing or accommodating our community center for maybe a larger venue. But um, I, right now, I, know, I think funding is an issue. Um, however, I think that um, Leslie Eisner is uh, really looking for a partnership, and I think that you know that's fantastic for her. And um, you know, I, I spoke with the city manager regarding that, and um, and I think they've had a meeting or two, and uh, or a meeting, and they've spoken. And I just hope that uh, we can, the city can accommodate her efforts and what she you know wants to bring forth. But we really, I think the problem is that the funding comes back, it comes back to funding.
And I think Wayne is right with that. And what is your name again? You know, it might be helpful if we use if we wear name tags. Do you think that would be helpful if we wear name tags? We can get them for the committee members if that's mm -hmm. the desire. Okay, and I just wanted to take notes. Oh, my name is Amanda King. Amanda. Okay. Yeah. So my my concern on this particular property mm -hmm. um, is a couple of fold. One is the timeline of doing this project because this is a massive project. This is it, this yeah. is years mm -hmm. of permits and negotiations and build outs and this is years. That's A. B, at the end of that period of time, I don't think the city wants to be in the in the position, correct me if I'm wrong, of being the landlord to renting out all these spaces. And third, after talking to Amanda, um, I don't know what the rent is, but I did some basic math on it, and we're not players at that price. We there's no way because we would need a theater and then the space behind because there's we need a shop, we need storage, we need dressing rooms, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's going to be a lot of work to make it a theater. It would be a lot of work. Theater, it not sounds a like a great idea, <laughs> yeah. and you see all the seats, and you can say, oh, this is great, and then you realize there's no backstage, yeah, there's, there's no dressing rooms, mm -hmm. there's no it's shop. Not workable. It's not really workable. And then let's say they, they did do it. Um, the rent's got to be, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, 10, 10 to 12. 10 to yeah. 20,000 a month? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're not. We're not players yeah. at that rate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I was suggesting when I talked to you, Amanda, that we look for, and there are three or four buildings currently that are out there that are about 10,000 square feet warehouses. They're just blank slates. And then a group such as mine that would come in with our own funding, and we would build it out. We would fund it. For yourself or others? Well, it depends on what the agreement was with the city. You know, we would have to hash that out and decide what, what support can the city give us if we come in and we take the space and, and we build it out, because that's going to cost a lot of money. Depending on ADA compliance, it could be mm -hmm. half to a million dollars to do that. I wonder if the district would partner, too, because, I mean, we're the only, we're the only school in the high school in the district that doesn't have a theater. Um, I mean, Danny Hills has one that's almost as run down as ours, but ours is not really a theater. It's a cafeteria, so it would be interesting yeah. to see if they would be willing to partner, too, at First Inc. Money. Yeah. Well, you raise a really great point because, um, you know, that's something that reaching out to trustee um, Elisa Davis would be really beneficial. I um, mean, to and she's your advocate, and yeah. you know, going to the Capstone Unified School District meetings and really presenting it to to them. And I know there's a new superintendent, so that's hopeful uh, for you. But um, yeah, that's something that should be doing. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't even I wasn't able to email her this week. I can um, reach yeah. out to Lisa. I'd be happy to. And Amy Hanacek, I also she's very much a supporter of the arts, so I know she'd be interested. Right, right. I reached out with Amy um, on the, the Nathbrook Park RV parking because that was a concern for a while when we got that settled, but yes. So I'll reach out to them before our next meeting and just get see what their thoughts are. And going back to the numbers, thank you, Amanda, for looking at you know how many seats each stakeholder would potentially need. I You weren't at the last meeting, right. so I said 500, but is that a correct number, or is that too many, or? Um, so generally, I would say between three to 400, so we okay. get a night at our shows. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and is there it's anyone else? Um, Michael, you haven't said anything yet, but as far as your needs might be for extended use from what you have, is this? Yeah, that's when, when I heard about this, I thought, wow, I would love to, as part of our season, go to a bigger theater and say, okay, we're presenting this one show where we have the opportunity to be on a bigger stage and do all the things that the shows that we cannot do on our stage. That that's not like a show. That's not yeah. like a show. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that, that would be great. That would be fantastic to be able to say, okay, we need the, this space, three to 400 seats. That yeah, would be great um, for the month of, of September or whatever it is, whatever that that month is. We would love to partner with mm -hmm. 
You know, an interesting idea. If everyone took on a month and said, all right, I am capable, or on a weekend or something, then it's not so much for one person to, to bite off. But, you know, the, this this is rather expensive to take on a $10,000 lease for for one organization extra. So, yeah. yeah. I uh, got most of my experience uh, working at the Curtain Call Dinner Theater in Tustin. Mm -hmm. was in Howard's, which was a movie theater. The actual um, floor for the, th not the theater, but the seating, was built over the seats. Uh, you could see the seats underneath if you actually went underneath there. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, we did have the fly space, and we had this much wing space, mm -hmm. um, but they did change at all and they did and I know when I left there um, he was trying to rent it out at 20,000 a month mm -hmm. and um, it's, it sat 300 mm -hmm. had a kitchen two dressing rooms with showers I mean it was a uh, run down but it was a pretty good spot and it had a great parking lot it was right off the freeway and couldn't couldn't get it rented out no, so it's just like, like and it's, it's just too expensive. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's just people like you and me, we're not going to pay $20,000 a month to do a show. If you add that to the cost of the it's show, the show. And we're doing show. seven show, six shows a week. Six shows a week. We're doing shows uh, Tuesday through Sunday, mm -hmm. two shows on Sunday. Um, you know, we, you had to take it, it was a dinner theater, so you had to take that factor in. But I mean, at least that pull people in. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time when it was um, popular, it was great, and then it became not popular, mm -hmm. and then it just became un unsustainable. You just couldn't do it. Yeah. No matter, even if you're selling out four shows a, a weekend, it just wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems like at the end of the day, it, it's really about the city of how much do they want the arts in the community? Yeah. What what do we want mm -hmm. to bring here? And why are we doing this? What is the goal yeah. of uh, and, and also, I'm sorry, I'm yeah, um, and I'm sure Leslie knows, and obviously you know, that there are always people asking, can we use your theater? Mm -hmm. For me, it's yeah. like, yes, but have you seen how small our stage is? You know? yeah. And yeah. they're like, oh, we yeah. want something yeah. bigger. Yeah. 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 You know, whether it's a dance recital, a lot of youth theaters that are yeah. looking uh, for space, mm -hmm. um, large. a lot. Large. I know a couple yeah. of dance companies that not companies, but classes that they're looking for some place for performances. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about a performance space, mm -hmm. I think it would be easy to fill. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm saying that doing really nothing. Um, <laughs> you know, how easy is it? But yeah, but is who? who wants to take is the city going to be the one to take over that right. to say? You know, we're going to deal with this. Um, yeah. I know the Rose Theater of Westminster. Yes. They they do that. Yeah, they you know they have 400 seats and they mm -hmm. run out their theater to youth groups and symphonies and all of that. And mm -hmm. it's part of the city. And mm. that's a really good model to look at. The yeah. Rose Theater. Yeah. And I know that Westminster. You know Tim Nelson. Yeah. So you read yeah. it like for he could tell us. Five hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I would I would say that Camino Real Playhouse would be willing to take that on. We're a nonprofit. We're already established. We've been in business going on 35 years now. We've been fundraising for the past two, three years mm -hmm. in anticipation of having to move because we lost our property. And um, I don't know what the city of San Clemente is willing to, you know, in what capacity they're able to partner with us, but we would be willing to take that on. So, as the overarching nonprofit. Yeah. That's nice to have that yeah, existing. Yeah. We are, we are, you know, just like you, yeah. we're an established theater. Mm -hmm. We have everything from tech equipment, actors, we have the entire infrastructure of staff, volunteers, and we basically be moving from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense. I just have one thought. I, anyone can have this who needs it. I just thought I would build it up, you know, blow it up so we could all kind of look at it more easily. But I think we need to find out why why the Kirkwain theaters failed and why other tenants have not felt like this site would be profitable for them. There must be some reasons that we don't know about, maybe the building or something about the parking lot or who knows exactly what it is, but why has it been vacant 
for this long? Why has the rent been so much? Right. No, I know. And, and, and it's been sitting vacant. I mean, this, this guy. And I don't want to sell it. They, they don't want to sell it. They don't want to sell it. Why do they want? Why have they been holding on to it so long? Maybe they like the law. Who is the owner of the show? There's something there. We asked that question. We asked that question. Question. Then the, um, yeah. the real estate agent said they do not want to sell it. Right. They own the entire um, uh, plaza. plaza. Yeah. Then they're not going to sell it. And I don't yeah. see, personally, from my point of view of fundraising, that putting that amount of money into something yeah. that I'm renting. Yes. Right. 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 Unless I have a long-term then, contract, that's mm -hmm. a lot of money. Right. Yeah. And then to answer your question, I think part of my other notes with jo um, when speaking with Jonathan Lightfoot, he said there was either he couldn't remember the, whether it was Hogue or Mission Hospital did want to go in there, but the problem was the the parking the parking was an issue, mm -hmm. and then the space. Mm -hmm. So then they decided to go somewhere else. I think it might have been at the outlet. So that was, probably was Hogue. Mm -hmm. So I think that was it. Yeah. Well, the building is, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it really needs updating, too. I mean, I think the whole thing would oh, yeah. be, you know, You're it's right. not so old to be vintage. It's, 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 it's ugly. <laughs> yeah, it's ugly. I mean, I'm sorry if anyone likes this building, but it's kind of a dog. I mean, it's really not attractive. And, you know, I would, that's a lot of money. This is a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's no. just the beginning. Like you said, mm -hmm. inside, you'd have to... To make it a workable theater with yeah. another big chunk of So you'd rather start from scratch rather than... I'd rather, me personally, I'd rather have about a 10,000, 11,000 square foot warehouse because we got the fly space, we got the width, and then we'll just come in and build it out. Well, Jim, what, Jim when is the fellow to talk to about a warehouse in San Francisco? Well, I, I have a list of them. Okay. <laughs> I have a list of them that I sent to um, Andy. Paul, um, there's one on Cordillera. Cordillera, there's one on Amen, there's one on Pierre del Sol, and there's one on Calais Frontera. And they're all around 10,000 square feet. They're all feet. right around 10,000 square feet. I know Jim sent me a listing this week, um, I just have to find it, but yeah. So, yeah, there's there's yeah. quite a few of them. They're all in industrial areas, mm -hmm. so they all have parking. Right. And that's trendy being and in industrial areas. It's very fine. trendy. Yeah. Most of the community theaters have to be in and you're lucky because you're in town, you can walk to restaurants. Yeah. That's nice. optimal, that's where we're at. But to be realistic price wise, where are you gonna find a warehouse in the middle of town? Mm -hmm. Right. And what I um, mentioned to Leslie um, before the meeting is that I did have a t conversation with the city manager, and he had mentioned to me that he was going to refer to, um, he was going to su submit the, the properties, the list of properties to Jonathan Lightfoot, and that Jonathan Lightfoot was going to call Leslie Eisner, and I'm, I'm sorry that, I don't know what happened, I, don't I need to happened. follow up with the city manager about that, because yeah. I tried to call him, and I think it, it was during, at lunch time, so... Let me see if I, I can. Well, yeah. we are obviously under a time crunch. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are because if, if we if this doesn't work out with the with San Clemente City support, we'll have to go someplace and rent a warehouse and build it out. Um, we have somewhere between eighteen months and probably right around eighteen months. So if we mm -hmm. found a space within the next couple of months, we could start building. We, we have the funding to do that. So you're with, uh, is your group, your nonprofit group, ready to be the umbrella group? Yes. Okay. Are, is your group willing to be the uh, prime lessee and rent out to other groups? Yes, that's what we do now. Okay. We already do that. So we have a ready-made situation We're ready here. ready to go. You're ready to go. Yeah. One would think that if you're ready to go, mm -hmm. uh, you need to get, uh, you, you need to get in front of Andy Hall ASAP, mm -hmm. yes. and you need to uh, be at the city council meeting. When is it on the uh, when you make your presentation? Uh, potentially the fifth of September or the fourteenth. Of, of the fourteenth, uh, and, and whenever Samantha makes her presentation to the city with regard to this. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and state your case because if you're willing to be the overall umbrella nonprofit and the overall uh, lessee yes. that would rent out to other groups, yes. um, why not? Mm -hmm. And I forgot what your name is. Amanda. Amanda, how do you yes. feel about that? 
I mean, I'm excited. I'd like to be a part of it as well. I know yeah. I'm two years in business, <laughs> so that's a little scarier for me. I don't have my nonprofit yet, but mm -hmm. I have big dreams and mm -hmm. um, would love to be doing dance festivals and bringing the arts here. Mm -hmm. And so it's very exciting. But I'm not in the position <laughs> as Leslie. It seems very scary, at, you know, to take it on. But I'm, I'm, I can mm -hmm. take on more, mm -hmm. um, not to the extent that she can offer. But. I would need mm -hmm. to find out yeah. from the city, I'm sure they'll have closed session mm -hmm. meetings on this to find out what the city would be willing mm -hmm. to do to support yeah. our endeavor. I Absolutely. Think, yeah. I think you need to define what it is you're looking for though. Mm -hmm. To mm -hmm. say city support us, mm -hmm. we need. there needs to be a little bit of a box that mm -hmm. in order to be successful the city needs, I would need this from the city. Okay. And that's how a partnership works, mm -hmm. that the city would get this in return, but I need this in order to make that happen. Okay. Because right. that's basically what we've had for the past 35 years, the partnership with the city. Um, mm -hmm. San Juan, with San Juan. With San Juan. Right. Are you one of the same size theaters? Sorry, are you going to make it a little bit bigger? bigger. Okay. So, so when, uh, oh, sorry. we have two theaters, main stage and yeah, and the bar. Yeah. I mean, I guess that would probably be right. for because that's a hold up for you. Yeah, you know, you need we need the bigger space. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know if you need that much space. So that I guess would be the probably largest. Well, I'll go as big as I can. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. And when I, when I was talking to the city manager regarding um, uh, Leslie um, Eisner, because that's what she had mentioned to me, she's looking for a partnership with the city, and so that was the focus. And I mentioned to the city manager that um, we already. Um, that the CSA committee has already partnerships with uh, organizations foundations, and you know we have only Hanson Beach Club partner partnering with 24 Carats, uh, Casa Romantica. They have a partnership with the found their foundation, so it's not like um, oh, and then also with FAM. Uh, the city of San Clemente owns a warehouse where FAM is located in, mm -hmm. and so uh, they have a partnership with that, and it was uh, my Mayor for Tim, uh, Steve Noblock, and others who reduced the rent for, in for them, and because uh, they provide a service. And um, with, with speaking to Mr. Hall, he had mentioned to me is that, um, you, you know, the, the the investment or basically helping mm -hmm. Leslie Eisner is that it, depending on what you're putting in or as far as what the city can do, mm. you have to also include what benefit comes back. And it's the bringing in a lot of, you know, a lot of people coming into the shows and then they go to restaurants to eat. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're bringing back a profit. So it's we established right. that for every dollar that's currently spent at the Playhouse, $8, eight dollars is spent in town. Because they come to dinner first and they go for drinks after. So it's millions of dollars that San Juan is going to be missing on this. And the other, the other statistic is that, I don't know about you if you've ever tracked it or not, but 80% of the people seeing our shows are not from San Juan Capstone. 80% are from outside and surrounding areas. So it's a magnet to the city. It's, it's pulling people in to shop and to eat. So it, it does bring a benefit to the city financially. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of partnerships with the city. The Heritage with the Marine Monument has a partnership mm -hmm. with the city. Lots of foundations do. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, you know, uh, that's something that is not un unusual. Um, so you need to get in front of, uh, of Andy as soon as possible and, uh, because Samantha's got is going to be writing a report and making a presentation uh, to the city. Okay. But so can we all agree that a Kokorian is off the table? Yes. Sadly. Yes. 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 So it's expensive. Yeah. It has so much potential. I mean, one thing if you were buying it, owning it, and investing in it for the long term, but if they don't want to sell it. No, they don't, don't want yeah. to sell it. Yeah. So it's part of the exactly. shopping center there. Right. Thank you. Oh, I, I know, I wanted to clap to you. We had our campaign ready. Yeah. 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 Um, do you, with a warehouse 10,000 feet? If the, if the size, and it was the right size, mm -hmm. it would def, uh, we would love it. And my the theater my vision a, of this, point. depending on like what, what we sit down with the city, and they're acceptable too, is to have a theater such as such as this sort of a thing where we can bring in accordion doors to the back third of the theater or so or maybe even in two separate spots so let's say i sold 100 tickets 
I can cordon off the back of the theater and it doesn't look like it's empty. Mm -hmm. It costs almost nothing to have accordion doors, right? You might even be really smart and have a stage on either side that's of it so that you can actually mm -hmm. have two shows so that you have once. Mm -hmm. oh, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Michael, do, do you have any comments on leasing or well, utilizing I, a space like that? I'm, I'm looking at our tiny theater that's been here for 70 years mm -hmm. and the difficulty we've had with the city um, trying to get our little 44 seat outdoor theater permits um, going when, during COVID mm -hmm. and since then and um, I'm not having much support until and I, I wish I could remember his name who stepped in he took he took over for Jonathan Lightfoot uh, he was he was the coordinator between us and the city and he just jumped in and made everything work for us so it took a month for him to get what we needed and we still don't have what we need we still don't have and that was just to get permits that's not funding uh, no no money or support from the theater my um, I don't want to put a, a negative on this but for another theater to come in and um, now we're competing we're already competing with four actors we're already you know and I understand, I understand that and that that's theater no matter what that's just how it is um, but to have another theater that the city says, oh, we're going to support them, and we're sitting here having been here for 70 years, makes me go, hmm, wow. Um, so, I mean, good luck if you can get the city to help. Um, well, I, I understand, of, I understand what you're saying, and I, I totally respect that sentiment. What I would say to you is, we're always going to compete for actors. Yeah, for no. certain. I sort of see this as, like, we have art shows, we have ballet come in, we have comedy once a month, we just brought in the Beatles tribute band. It's not yeah, just the them. theater, you know, it's no, not just theater. And I think that we're so starved in, in Orange County for theaters yeah. that, I mean, you're not having problems filling your seats and neither am I. I mean, I sold out 16 shows of Sound of Music almost 2,000 people came to that show. Yeah. So I, I think that there is an appetite, there's room for both of us. And then like, when the idea of it being a, um, a theater for all, and I thought, like I said, I would love to go to a big theater and say, okay, I want to win, and I know Kirstie would love to have a theater that she can come in and sell a theater. <laughs> uh, I think that's, that would be great. Um, to say this is the San Clemente Performing Arts Center. Yes. Um, I think that's great. Um, my hesitation, if it's coming to Real um, Playhouse and people rent from it, because um, we do rentals as well. We yeah. have, you know, we've had flamenco dancers, we have the same group that's coming to Earth Theater. Right. The cover bands are coming this next month, and then another. Uh, comedian, uh, two comedians coming in, and so um, youth theaters, and we have all, all of that as well. That brings in a different audience yeah. uh, from all over, and um, I just I'm hesitant on it because I, right, I don't want to see it as customers saying, "Which show do I go to?" or, or all of a sudden. Um, I don't want to compete. I don't feel like I'm competing with you because people say, oh, they're doing I said, but I, you know, we do get different audiences mm -hmm. and even actor-wise, it's like, well, I would come do something rotten instead of my show. I mean, because it's a great show and I know, you know a lot of actors mm -hmm. that I know are there and I think that's fantastic and I think what you put on is fantastic. Um, I'm just, I'm just um, hesitant about another theater company in the same city. That this, all of a sudden, the city is going to support that, but we've been here for 70 years. Right. Um, you know, as a resident of over 50 years, um, I feel competition is always good as far as uh, the more the merrier. I think um, going to St. Clemente High School and finding the tour work for years, it, our, our motto was, it has been, what, one town, one team. And I think that working collaboratively with other partnerships with everybody of how can we 
help you and how can we better our city. Uh, Leslie Eisner Community Real Playhouse already has a patronage, uh, you know, patrons already going to her, it, that's already been established for the last 35 years. So there's not that competition, so it, they already have that, right? It's always good to have choices. And as far as my experience with humanitarian missions, we ran into the same thing with, we have a couple of humanitarian missions um, in Orange County. And they were always would say, well, you know, we're competing with RNs. Well, we're not if we can work together. Yeah. And that was the key thing, working together, saying, okay, yeah, we have limited anesthesiologists that can do pediatric surgeries. Or we have limited RNs with that are bilingual in Spanish and can work you know, one in the OR and pre -op or uh, post-op. But what I'm trying to say is working together collaboratively and just having a partnership and just trying to help each other out. Right, we might coordinate our seasons. We might look and yeah. say, hey, what are you doing? I'm well, and, yeah, I, I, I know we would have to. We would have to. I, mean, yeah. I know that. And, and we, so we don't compete for the same singers. Yes. And we coordinate the musicals. That's right. funny. We've got about five shows opening on the same year. That's right. All over. It's just yeah. like yeah. everybody's on that exact same yeah. day. Yeah. So, I mean, um, it sounds like there. There's definitely there's, there's there's definitely this possibility to see how it could work. Mm -hmm. I don't. I I think also it's important to understand what were those obstacles with the you know with the city and you know maybe we bring in another representative to kind of um, make sure that we don't cross those now or that we that we you know get answers to the things that we are afraid of, right? Yeah. Right. Um, that, I think that would be kind of a crucial next step. I think that's pretty um, common mm -hmm. amongst all cities, though. I don't think it's it's just San oh, oh, many. Oh, I mean, I'll tell you firsthand. It's and I love the idea of a bigger, I mean, like I said from the beginning, I love the idea of a bigger um, theater. I, I think community center. To be able to yeah. do for, those big shows. Well, no, for the city. I, I think I love what we do. I love our tiny theater, and I love that I, the challenge of it. Um, I think, well, like I said, what we do and what Leslie does is very different. She does, she can do Santa music and something wrong. Those, those shows that we could never do on our stage are just too big of shows for us for our little stage, and we figure out what we can do. So I don't believe there's that competition there for plays. Sometimes that we kind of we did the same plays and, and that happens. Um, but I would love to, to be able to say, hey, as part of our season, our first show or our last show or whatever is going to be in this space because it can become a big... In um, this end? This yeah, we're, we're, yeah. Let's so say, you're willing to... to Cooperate. Oh, of course. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So yeah. we, we have the school, yes, we have the Cabrillo Theater, yeah. we have you. Yeah. Well, and I think I was, it comes really back down to, I know what, what Michael was saying, it comes down to what Amanda was saying. What does the city want for the arts? Are they wanting to have a city run performing arts center that includes all these different groups? Or do they want one group to run it and then we become entities from the, you know what I mean? I, there is a difference, mm -hmm. right? In some cities, it's part like like in um, Westminster. Yeah. Was the, it's part of the city program. Well, like right. Temecula, it's totally they, yeah. the city yes. built that yeah. incredible. Yeah. It's a beautiful the place that people the rent out. Yeah. So the city gets the income from all the renters. So it just depends on what the city's vision is, and I don't know what what that is. I don't know what they want. Right. So you would and prefer then, the city to be the lessee, uh, and you would build it out. Well, if if that was how they wanted to structure it, or did they do they envision owning the building themselves? Yeah. Does the does the city want to own the want. building and then I build it out, or do they want to rent the building and I build it out? Those are or then I need yeah. a very long term. Right. We don't understand yet. Is what is this? I know it started out as a vision of having an amphitheater for people to enjoy and rent and things. And it's more because we were talking about the noise, complaints, and cost. Cost. And cost. Millions, all millions, cost. Millions, millions, millions of so we we're thinking of alternatives. Um, yeah. And just that there, I feel like there is a great need for the arts or community yeah. or people. Like all of our, these groups would love to yeah. use it just for a few and weeks right. a year. 10, 20 <laughs> years from now, it could morph into an amplifier. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. This is a side thought. Because as I'm hearing everyone 
talking, we're, we're all educating the public, mm -hmm. and we're all, we, every single one of us is bringing the arts to the community. What if there's already music in the parks with San Clemente, right? Can we, each one of us, kind of piggyback on that so that before, as we're building this, we're getting people excited about what we are creating? Because that's in the summertime, right? You do that at the outlets. Yeah, the that's time. right. Yeah. yeah. And it's great. Is it's so fun. Is there space at the outlets? Is there space mm -hmm. there? No. No, we looked at them. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm just thinking the stage is already there. If we have, I mean, it takes some orchestrating of getting it organized, and it's harder with this. Um, that have the kids off in the summertime. That is that is tricky to pull it together. But and just to get the excitement about it, what, whatever where we're going, just to start teaching them about that and saying our grand opening is mm -hmm. this. We're t we're this is what we are doing. Sure. I don't know. Yes, yeah. but I also about. think too. I mean, if if what Leslie is is presenting to the city mm -hmm. and and we all say yes when you have. Leslie, you know, Camille Royale and Camille Playhouse and St. Clemente High School and whatever, saying we're all behind this, mm -hmm. I think that's a great thing. And I, I, for the city, for the city to say we've got this art center or performing art space mm -hmm. that, you know, everybody's behind. It's not just yeah. this one group coming. Right, right. And we also, I just wanted to, we, we also had Sebastian's Playhouse. Uh, which is now in the casino, so that was you know that was there before as well. So, so, so we did a dinner theater, 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 right? theater. Yeah. theater yes, yeah. but but still it was you know we it, it was yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. and we used to partner yeah. with um, with Capital Unified School District yeah. in the summer times. So we had these internship programs where they would send over high school kids, and we would uh, offer a program either in tech, they learn lighting in tech, or with stage managing, mm -hmm. or um, you know costuming. And so we partnered with the school district, and that was great. It was super fun. We loved that program until COVID. But, yeah. So, yeah. so in the interest of time, actually, you're great about this one mm -hmm. too. But where, what do, the, what are our steps? In First step. Go talk to Mr. Hall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right upstairs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let me help coordinate that meeting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. And because that's the first step. That's the first step at this point. Do they want to buy it? Do they want to lease it? Do they want to be a major lessee? What, what's, what's, what does the city want? What does the city want? What does the city want? That's the first step. And excuse me, just to clarify, is that a question for Andy or is that a question for the city council members? It's a question, well, eventually city council. it's going to have to come. So I think you, you want to focus back to the point of this, this committee. Mm -hmm. It's to look at the feasibility of an amphitheater. So um, going through a review, we've, the committee's determined that an amphitheater is a lot of money. It's going to be a challenge to build in the immediate and takes a lot of planning. So we've, we've set aside an outdoor amphitheater and we've focused on more of a, a performing arts facility, a space. It sounds like the want is to exclude the Kerkorian because it's cost prohibitive at this time um, and steer more towards a, a half the size of that space. Some kind of commercial space is fine. It also sounds like the, um, the want is to include a nonprofit in that um, development of that space and that could be the Camino Real Playhouse if that's the desire of council. Um, does, that, does that sum it up? Um, on top of all that, there's, it's, I think, four viable groups at this table at least that would look to rent the space or utilize the space whenever it's built out. Um, and it, it sounds like there's, there could be flexibility in who operates in the space, but all four of these organizations might be interested in, in renting it or whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. and, and, oh, sorry. sorry, the only question I have is, is the nonprofit um, portion of that uh, important to have or let's say the city says, yes, we want to own it and operate it, is it still important to have the nonprofit um, as a part of that? Sure. I yes. don't understand. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, can you just explain why so that I... Money. Just money. money. It comes down to money. money. Yes. Yeah. It okay. down to money. And experience. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, sure. okay. exactly. I just want to make sure that I... I just have one quick question. Um, are you being stymied right now in anything that you're doing with no. it? I think it's as well, well as getting behind 
you know, this organization, we also need to as well get behind, you know, and recognize your your contribution to our community and get behind what you're doing with your outdoor amphitheater. Um, I, I believe now? our our outdoor um, theater is temporary. We've got a temporary permit, and, and it's been a struggle to get them to um, allow it to be permanent. Okay. And, really, and, well, and it's not, uh, we haven't, I, it was allowed for a year, and then they said, oh, you have to resubmit. And then they said, well, you can okay, only do 15. They really group, um, tied us in to how many shows we could do out there and, and what we could do. And what I did, there's no change in parking. It's actually less people that that theater hold, that theater, that patio holds. Mm -hmm. um, and so I you know, actually, right now, I don't even know what our last date is that we're allowed, and so now we're going to have to reapply again. Okay, well, my, well, what can we do to help you and your project move along as well as get behind Leslie? Well, so, our, pro we our project, has, our little outdoor theater, we have nothing to do with Leslie. We would support as long as we know right. that we're, you know, it's, it's, it's going to help the community. It's going to help right. your students. It's going to help anybody else that wants to come in. Right. Um, but I heard what you said initially, which is like it's it's we need to as well as get behind the new exciting thing. You know, the new big sparkly fun things. We need to as well recognize you and get behind you and well, and help, I think you do it and, and make sure that you are not being stymied and getting excited about what you're doing. Yeah. So, well, how do we set up a meeting or, or move what you're doing forward? In a way that you're happy with. Yeah. My suggestion would be have you spoken to Cecilia Gallardo Daly? Because she is the director of uh, community development. And that's, I mean, she spoke today at the, uh, the coffee shop, coffee chat, uh, Fridays at, down at the Do uh, Dorothy Visser Senior Center. And she was there, and there was someone out in the community that had some, some concerns regarding his building and, and whatnot. And Cecilia said, let's, you know, let me, you know, let, let's talk. And she may be the person to, to talk with if there's some concerns regarding, yeah, regarding your, you know, what's happening with you. Is that the reason that you're having trouble getting that permitting? I don't know. Oh, yeah, right. that's the question. It's just red tape. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but you're, in, 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 you're at the borderline <clears throat> between commercial and residential. Uh huh, maybe mm -hmm. that's why. So there are. But there, and it, there's. But we're, we're, for our. Theater, there's no change in the building. There's no change in parking. No, but I, there's there, no there amplification. Been outdoors. But it doesn't. They don't use microphones. Or they don't use microphones. Microphones. Oh, wow. it doesn't well, at first, they any didn't allow, uh, last mm -hmm. year. They didn't allow us to use any uh, amplification. Mm -hmm. At least in front, we won't use that. We don't okay. need it. Mm -hmm. It's basically its own little amphitheater. Um, and they allowed it this year, but we haven't used amplification. Yeah. Because again, we okay, don't yeah. need it. I, it's just that's a, always a concern. We're next door to residential. Yeah, yeah we, we had a meeting in this building and in this room at when the permits were allowed, and they said, yeah, they had already done the study. They said it doesn't affect anything. Our neighbors, we know our neighbors. Um, they love the same Who is it that you were with? Do you remember besides Jonathan Wright? It was whoever took over his position. Oh, does anyone know who that is? So I, I don't, but I do want to focus on the amphitheater yes. committee. We're yeah. getting a little yes. derailed. Yes. I think right. it's important it's and it sounds like there's some folks that want to support you in that effort. Um, but I want to get back to the amphitheater and then this can go on afterwards. Yeah. Right. If that's okay. So is there any other discussion from committee members related to Old business item A, which is the discussion of feasibility. Have we covered it? Is there anything else that you feel is important to add to this conversation? Just one question. I'm sure it's already been addressed, but I don't know. Uh, are there any city buildings that we haven't thought about that are that we could use because that would be so much more affordable? Right. Yeah. Is that, have we addressed that? Um, we have not. Okay. Um, the, we don't have any vacant properties. Okay. Um, there's buildings, certainly we own, the city mm -hmm. owns a number of facilities, but there's nothing that is an immediate 
flip the switch and it's ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, as I've shared with Amanda Quintanilla, um, certainly the auditorium at the community center mm -hmm. could be that, um, but th that's then, then are we taking away another public um, asset, which is really just a large open meeting forum? I don't know. Um, those are just you know questions we have to ask when we look at taking away one service to, to support another service. Um, so the short answer is no, there's not mm -hmm. um, just an empty building. Mm -hmm. There's certain, you know, you mentioned it, FAM, that's mm -hmm. just down the street. That is a, a big space, yeah. um, but that comes with its constraints. There's a parking issue there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's constraints in that building mm -hmm. as well. Um, but other than that, the city doesn't have a, yeah. you know, kind of an open area, okay. right. unfortunately. And I requested from the city manager when I spoke to him about a list of properties and buildings that we own, because I had no idea, I mean, a couple of years ago I just found out that, you know, we own that building, I mean, the city owned mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. building, yeah. I had no idea, mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, well, does that does it cover it for yes, the I feasibility? Think, I think so. I think okay. Wrapped it up Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we'll move on to what is new business, which is our next meeting date. Is there a want to meet before the council meeting, um, or? Do I think it would be good to meet before the council meeting to see okay. what, what the discussions were with Andy. Okay. No. So um, I will do my best then to also potentially prepare what would be presented to the council so okay. the committee has some eyes on it just Good. to make sure I'm not off base. Um, when is the council meeting? Yes. Let's, um, why don't we go ahead and target the September 14th meeting? That's a Thursday. So that gives us just a little bit of time. Um, They'd have only, we'd I have to meet next week. It not be at September 14th meeting. There's a um, state of the city in San Juan oh. that I'm required oh. to go to okay. as president of the plan. So any other date. Then it would have to be October 3rd. Okay. So I don't know if that's too late. Um, when is the city requiring you to go to They wanted 90 days, <laughs> which would be September. So we'd be pushing it August or October third. But is there one before this September? I we're too late to get too on the late. agenda. Too mm -hmm. late for that. Yeah, unfortunately. What time is that meeting? Mm -hmm. Those meetings are at six o'clock. Um, depending on where this falls, it could either go under a staff report or any business. I don't know where where the clerk and city manager would want to put it. So could that be at the beginning or the end? <laughs> Can, make a, can we make a request right now? It's just up to them. It's kind of how the agenda falls, yeah. I don't, if if they're just wanting to report out, it could just go under staff reports, which is kind of at the front end, and they can bump it forward. I don't know. But this committee would need to meet regardless um, ahead of that then. So yes. we're looking at, at a minimum, it needs to be sometime next week, because I've got to get my report in. Fridays seem to work well for everyone, right? Yeah, we're dark next Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, right. No, can't, yeah, I can't do it week. Friday. Okay. Thursday? Well, it depends on when you're meeting with Andy. Yeah, well, that she'll let me know when. Yeah, why don't we... Um, it looks like... Thursday the 31st, it would have to be before 12 o'clock or after 2.30. I'm, I'm not, my, my son took him to college and that's parent orientation day, so I will be out of town. On that on Thursday? Thursday the 31st, but that's okay. I'll just... Susie, what is Wednesday or Tuesday? Uh, Wednesday, um, we have the congressman coming for... Um, mm -hmm the government city affairs meeting at 12, so it would have to be in the afternoon after um, probably like 2.30 or 3, maybe 2.30. Well, don't, don't move on account. I'm gone that week, so like I, that means I'm okay. out, so don't plan around. August 30th like works. Okay, um, the 31st is better for, for our calendaring though, so that would be Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> 
before noon is ideal for me. Or earlier is better for me on the 31st. If we're doing Thursday, if anyone. So, 31st. All right. So, oh, yeah. I'm open to anything, whatever. On the 31st. Wayne, what does your calendar look like? Cinnamon rolls. I know. I oh, yeah. I'm so going to bring you. Yes. Yeah, and we know. I'm not you're be here, you're so delinquent. I'm not going to meet so I can bring you cinnamon rolls. <laughs> you probably. I know. I did. <laughs> it's grown since the last time I was here. I don't know how to make a lot. <laughs> so right now we're at August 31st, and it would be before 12 o'clock. Susie, what does that look like I, for I'm you? Fine. I yeah, actually... On, what day is that? That's what a day? Thursday. Thursday. I can do it. Thursday. Yes. Okay, I can do a Thursday, I think, at this point. Yeah. And Pamela? I can do Thursday, but no time before noon. Okay. I prefer the afternoon. My son has a doctor's appointment in the morning. Okay. Um, then for... With, uh, what about like 1 o'clock or 12.30 or 9 o'clock? I, I, I turn into pumpkin at noon on okay. Thursday. <laughs> so it could be... But, but you don't need, I don't need, you guys can still meet. It would have to be 2.30. 2.30, August 31st? Yes. Does that work for... Obviously, Kirsty, sorry. I mean, you need to get yeah. into, into well, Andy ASAP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can I so there was a question about that, just out of curiosity, and I'm just stepping out of the role in the paper and just being the resident here. <laughs> um, wouldn't it be a little better if we had, like, all of the groups that are interested in doing this go instead of just one or two people represented? To meet with Andy? To meet with Andy, yeah, because it seems like it might give a better overview of well, everybody that's interested? I, if they're going to be talking about financials, I think that's between Leslie yeah. and the city manager. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that would be, yeah, because it might be closed session discussion, correct? But yeah, um, so I, I, the point of these meetings and me is to be that liaison to Andy. Um, so I hope that you trust I'm reiterating these things to him um, so he knows who the players are. And then he can get the full update too um, ahead of the council meeting. The report. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. Okay. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. We have no oral communications unless somebody has three more minutes of something to speak to. Okay. Okay. No. Hearing none. Um, we will entertain a motion to adjourn to August 31st at 2:30 p.m. And we'll meet back here in this facility. In this one. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by Amanda, second by Wayne. All in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for oh. the guest. <laughs> Should we oh, start the second one? <coughs> yes. No, because I have to oh, change. I, I need to add right. Pamela to it. Yeah, it's in the committee oh, member yeah. comments. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to add it to the public comment? Yeah. Because she's the one that she all mentioned you got that, it. you know, the CD, the CD, the CD, the compliance. That was the first thing she said. It was like, this is not EA compliant. Just get that in the record. Let me, um, we'll add that and then I'll have it ready to sign next week. Okay, thank you so much. I wanted to. This is all.